Her name is Galina Timchenko. Uh, she was the chief editor of a Russian news site, uh, news website called Lentaru. Um, and she was very good at that job, which is why, in the end, she was fired from that job. It was in 2014, um, shortly after Russia invaded Ukraine, invaded Ukraine and took Crimea in 2014. Um, Galita Timchenko was fired from Lentaru after, under her leadership, Lentaru published uh, an interview with a Ukrainian leader who was critical of the Kremlin. Uh, in response to her firing, more than 60 of Timchenko's rank-and-file reporters posted on the newspaper's website a statement of protest, and then they all followed her out the door. They all quit in protest of her firing, 60 of them. Galena Timchenko and her former team from Lentaru, uh, they decided that they would build their own site, a new independent news organization, news written in Russian for the Russian people. And they decided they would call themselves Medusa. Their motto is, the news returns, which makes sense once you know the story of why they were founded. Medusa decided they would set up their headquarters uh, not inside Russia, but next door in Latvia, hoping that that would make it harder for the Russian government to meddle in their operations or to meddle with their finances. They published Medusa content on their website, which is Medusa, M-E-D-U-Z-A uh, dot I-O. That's their website. But they also published it on an app, which is a harder thing for the Kremlin to block. And it worked at Medusa. It worked for a while anyway. In 2021, Russia labeled Medusa a foreign agent. That label was designed to scare away and threaten anybody who might advertise on Medusa. And it had the desired effect. It made it almost impossible for Medusa to, play, to pay their bills. Um, through it all, though, and, and at great personal risk, Medusa's journalists and their editors, they somehow managed to keep themselves afloat. But even more than that, they really managed to succeed. Medusa is the most read independent news source in the Russian language. Which, of course, brings us to now. The Kremlin has now taken another swing, a big swing, um, at Medusa, labeling them no longer just as a foreign agent, but now as what the Kremlin calls a undesirable organization that effectively outlaws the very existence of Medusa inside Russia. It means anybody inside Russia who visits Medusa's website, anybody who likes or interacts with any of Medusa's social media content, anybody who tries to share a link to one of their articles could be jailed for that in Russia. The designation that the Kremlin's just given this news organization gives authorities the power to jail anybody who tries to give money to Medusa or to jail anybody even who agrees to talk to them for an interview. Given this, it is unclear how Medusa will continue to do their work. They say they will keep trying. They say they will keep trying and then some. Medusa's staff just issued this public letter to their readers. I just want to read you part of it. They say, quote, we'd like to tell you that our new undesirable status doesn't worry us, that it means nothing. But that would be untrue. We are afraid. We fear for our readers and for those who have collaborated with Medusa for many years. We fear for our loved ones and our friends. But we believe in what we do. We believe in free speech. And we believe in a democratic Russia. The greater the pressure against us and our values, the harder we will resist. Medusa... M-E-D-U-Z-A, Medusa.io. You can find them online right now. We don't know how long they'll be there, but they're fighting.